Hi everyone, my name is Mrs. Greenman. I'm going to work with you today on graphing rational functions day one. We're going to start with our do now here. Um, what you can see is you see this graph here and the table of values. That is the graph and the table of values for the function f of x equals 1 over x. This is a rational function and today we're going to be talking about how to graph them. So if you take a look at that function, what value of x would make our denominator 0? So remember, 1 divided by something, we want what's in the denominator to be 0. In this case, that would be 0. What happens if x is 0? What happens to the graph at that value for x? Our graph will be undefined. And as you can see here, the table of values, when x is 0, there's an error message. And today we're going to talk about what that means and what that looks like on the graph because it's going to appear in two different ways. Today we're going to talk about discontinuities. The first thing we're going to discuss is the fact that the domain of every rational function is all real numbers except values of x that make the denominator equal to zero, which means that your graph doesn't exist at these points. And these points are called points of discontinuity. A discontinuity is basically where if you're drawing your graph, there's going to be some sort of break in the graph where you'd have to physically pick up your pencil or pen to draw the graph. So for example, if I look at the do now, if I were graphing this function here, I was sketching it, I'd have to physically, because this is going to keep going up, physically pick up my pen or pencil to continue on with the rest of my graph. So we're going to review finding discontinuities. So basically those are just values of x that are excluded from your domain. So if you take a look at this rational function, we remember that the denominator of a rational function can never equal zero. The first thing we want to do is we want to factor and simplify. So we have x minus 4 in the numerator, and in the denominator, if we factor x squared minus 2x minus 8, we get x minus 4 and x plus 2. So in the denominator, we have two factors. So we want to look at the first factor and the second factor and decide what values of x are going to be excluded from our domain. Well, we can see here that x cannot equal 4 because 4 minus 4 is 0 and 0 times anything is 0. And x can also not equal negative 2 for the same reason. So we would say that our graph has these two points of discontinuity at 4 and negative 2. Something special will happen in our graph. Okay, so what we're going to take a look at now is more specifically what are those points of discontinuity. So if you scroll up with me here. Here are some steps to find points of discontinuities, and it's basically the same thing as finding restrictions, which you guys have been working on. Um, you're going to factor your denominator and determine any values of x that are going to make the denominator zero, and those are going to be your points of discontinuity. So there are two types of discontinuities. Okay, The first one we're going to talk about is called a removable discontinuity, and a removable discontinuity Sorry, I just want to get this pen out of here. A removable discontinuity is called a hole. It is basically a point where your graph stops and starts over again. It is removed by the process of factoring and canceling. The way to identify holes on your graph is by using an open circle. Okay? To find the coordinate of the hole, what you're going to do is you're going to use that x value and substitute it into the simplified function. Your graph is going to be identical to the simplified expression with the exception of it's going to contain that blank open circle. So let's take a look at an example so it can make more sense with what we just talked about. So if you see here we have the function f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared divided by x minus 2. So if we take a look at this function we know that x cannot equal 2. We have a problem if 2 is in the denominator because we'd have 2 minus 2, which will give us 0, and we can't divide by 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify, and we're going to factor the numerator. So I can take out my GCF of x squared, and I'm left with x minus 2 over x minus 2. But when we simplify it, what happens is we have the same factor in the numerator and the denominator, so it cancels. And our original rational function simplifies to x squared or x squared over 1. So we don't have zero in the denominator anymore, which is great. So this factor that's removed, which is why it's called a removable discontinuity, tells us that we're going to have a hole in our graph at x equals 2. So it's going to be somewhere along the line x equals 2. But to figure out exactly where it is, you're going to take that x value where your hole is, and you're going to substitute into your simplified expression. So 2 squared is 4. 
So that means on our graph, we're going to have a hole at the coordinate 2, 4. So if you go to your graph, 2, 4, you're going to plot an open circle. And if you were to graph the rest of this, you can treat it as if you're graphing the function x squared. We know that's a parabola. So if we plug in some values, like negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is 4, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is normally 4, which it is, but in this case, because our original function had x minus 2 in the denominator, we know 2 is excluded from our domain. So when we connect these points, making our graph, we just have an open circle right here where we have our hole. And that's how you, on a graph, show that there is a removable discontinuity. If you were to use your graphing calculator, if you started graphing the original function, if you looked at the table of values, it would tell you at 2 in your table of values, it would say 2 and then it would say error. So your graph is telling you that something's happening when x is 2, and specifically it's a whole because we have a factor that you can remove from the numerator and the denominator. The second type of discontinuity you're going to learn about today is called an asymptote. Okay? Basically what an asymptote is, it's somewhere in the graph, um, it's where in the graph it shoots off to infinity. These are values for x that remain in the denominator after you factor and cancel. A vertical asymptote is identified on the graph as a dashed vertical line. Okay. Um, and basically an asymptote is a line that the graph approaches without ever touching. So for example, if you take a look at example 2, we have x plus 3 divided by x plus 2. We know that x cannot equal negative 2 because if we have negative 2 plus 2 in the denominator, we have 0. So that would be a problem for us. It would be undefined. But unlike example 1, where we had a factor in the numerator and the denominator that we could remove, we can't do that here. So this is going to tell us that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. So on our graph here, what it would look like is you would see a dashed vertical line at x equals negative 2. And basically what you can see here, I'm going to do it in a different color, is that your graph is riding along the asymptote. So here's that graph, just so you could see it a little bit better. It's riding along the blue dotted line, which is your vertical asymptote. So as x gets really, really close to negative 2, never hits negative 2, your y values shoot up to positive infinity. And on the left side, as x gets really, really, really close to negative 2, your y values shoot to negative infinity. So same thing, if you were to graph this function on your calculator, it would show an error message in your table at negative 2. And that error is indicating that you have a discontinuity at x equals negative 2. In this case, it shows up as a vertical asymptote. So just to recap, there are two types of discontinuities. A non-removable, which is shown as a whole in your graph, and, a um, and an asymptote, which you will see with a vertical dashed line when your factor is not removed. So here are some steps on how to find your discontinuities. First thing you want to do is factor the function and cancel any common factors. The factors that cancel become holes in the graph, and then you can substitute back to find the y value. And the factors that don't cancel that are left in the denominator are your vertical asymptotes. So let's look at a few practice problems. What we're going to do is we're going to look at these two examples, and we're going to identify all discontinuities, and we're going to state whether it's a whole or a vertical asymptote. So remember, step one, what you're going to do is you're going to factor. So we have 5 over difference of squares, x minus 3, x plus 3. So if we examine our denominator, we know that we have discontinuities at x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. So x can't equal 3 and x cannot equal negative 3. We don't have a factor in the numerator and the denominator that cancels, so here we don't have any holes. But we do have vertical asymptotes at 3 and negative 3. So on our graph, we would have two vertical lines, one at 3 and one at negative 3. In the second example here, if we simplify this, we would have x minus 2 over x minus 2 times x plus 3. We have a common factor in the numerator and the denominator, and we're left with 1 over x plus 3. We can see that x, we have discontinuities 
x cannot equal 2 and x cannot equal negative 3 because if x is negative 3 or 2, our denominator is 0. We see that we have a whole at 2. And if we want to find the y value of the whole, we're going to substitute 2 into our simplified expression. So we have 1 over 2 plus 3, which is 1 fifth. We need to make sure we um, substitute that x value of the whole into the simplified expression because if we plug it into the original one, we're going to be left with 0 in the denominator. And then we have a vertical asymptote at the factor that's still remaining in the denominator at negative 3. So to recap, to identify your discontinuities, you look at your denominator and see what values make your denominator 0. If you have a factor that cancels in the numerator and the denominator, like in B over here, that tells you there's going to be a hole in the graph. Any other values that are left in the denominator that would make x uh, the denominator 0 are your vertical asymptotes. So lastly, we're going to pull all of this together, and we're going to actually graph a rational function. So the steps are written out for you here to help you when you are graphing. So take a look at those steps to help you. Here are your steps. Okay, so we've already done a lot of this today. So what you're going to do is you're going to simplify the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to factor the numerator, and I'm going to factor the denominator. And when I see this here, I can tell that I know that I have discontinuities at x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. So I know that x is any real number except negative 2 and 1. So something's going to happen at negative 2 and 1. Now it's either going to be a whole or a vertical asymptote. Since we have a factor that's in the numerator and denominator that cancels, we know that we have a whole at x equals negative 2 because negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So we have negative 2 comma. Now we have to figure out the y value at that whole. So we use the simplified expression and we replace every x with negative 2. So negative 2 minus 6 and negative 2 minus 1. So we end up getting 8 thirds. So on our graph, we're going to have a whole at negative 2, 8 thirds. So we have our discontinuities, a whole. And then lastly, we have a vertical asymptote, x minus 1. So we're looking for the value of x. So x is going to equal 1 because we set each factor equal to 0 to find the value of x. So if we take a look at our graph, we know we're going to have a vertical asymptote at 1. So remember that a vertical asymptote is a dashed line. So we're going to have a dashed line at 1. We are also going to have a hole on our graph at the point negative 2 comma 8 thirds. 8 thirds is about 2.66-ish. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our graph here. And we're going to make a hole at negative 2, roughly 2.6-ish. So now we have some of the key features of the graph. We know there's a hole there, and we know we have a vertical asymptote. So the last thing we're going to do, so we can plot this a little bit more accurately, is we're going to find some x values around the um, vertical asymptote to help us graph. So here are some x values I use. So we have an asymptote at 1. So I use some values of 0, negative 1, negative 3, 2, 3, and 4. And you can take these x values and substitute them into your simplified expression. And these are the y values you'll get. You can also use the table on your graphing calculator to help you. And once you have these values, you're going to use them to help you make the rest of your graph. So we have the point um, 0, 6. We have the point negative 1, 7 over 2. So negative 1, 3 and a half. Then we have negative 3, 2.25. Oops, sorry, that's not 2.25 over here. And your graph is going to basically trail off like this. Don't connect through that hole. And then your graph kind of rides along the asymptote. And then on the other side of your asymptote, after 1, we have some values 2, negative 4, 3, negative 1.5, 
4, negative 2 thirds. And your graph is going to ride along that green asymptote and going to ride along like this. Tomorrow you're going to see in the next lesson about horizontal asymptotes, which will help you make your sketch and your graph a little bit more accurate. Um, but this final example pulls everything together. So the key things you want to remember is you're looking for the values of x that make your denominator 0. So essentially you're setting your factors equal to 0 to figure out what x values are. And when the factors that cancel, those are your holes. So we knew we had a hole at negative 2. And then you use the simplified expression to help you find the y value. And then anything that's left in the denominator is going to be an equation of your vertical asymptote. Remember that your whole should be written as a coordinate since it's a point, And your vertical asymptote is an equation, so it should be x equals your number. After you guys have um, watched this video and completed your note sheets, there's a practice sheet for you to work on as well. Hope you enjoyed the lesson.